Greens. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. We turn now to Ohio, where a grand jury has declined to indict a white police officer who shot and killed a 22-year-old African-American man named John Crawford. On August 5th, four days before, the unarmed black teenager Michael Brown was fatally shot by police in a case that ignited the country, John Crawford walked into a Walmart in Beaver Creek, Ohio. According to his girlfriend, the two went to the store to buy supplies for making s'mores at a cookout. As he walked around the store talking on his cell phone, Crawford picked up an unloaded BB air rifle that was lying on a shelf. Surveillance footage released Wednesday following the grand jury's decision shows what happened next. As Crawford stands in the pet supplies aisle talking on a cell phone, a customer calls 911. In this footage, the 911 call has been synced with the surveillance footage. Beaver Creek 911, where is your emergency? I'm at the uh, Beaver Creek Walmart. There is a uh, gentleman walking around with a gun in the store. Is he got it pulled out? Yeah, he's like pointing at people. What does he look like? He's a black male, probably about six foot tall. Okay. What's he wearing? Um, you blue shirt, that? blue pants. While the caller, Ronald Ritchie, claims Crawford is pointing the gun at people, the surveillance footage shows he's pointing the gun at the ground, occasionally swinging it and prodding supplies on a shelf in front of him. Ritchie later acknowledged to The Guardian, quote, at no point did he shoulder the rifle and point it at somebody. Minutes into the call, Ritchie tells a dispatcher Crawford is pointing the gun at two children. The surveillance footage shows that while a woman and two children appear at the end of the aisle, Crawford never actually points the gun at them. Okay, he's a black male, black shirt and blue jeans. Yeah. Does he have a hat or anything on? No, he's okay. got like an afro. An afro? Okay. Beaver Creek, did you get that? I got it. Have an afro. Right here, please. Gotcha. What's your name again, sir? My name is Ronald Ritchie. He just pointed at like two children. Just over a minute later, police appear in the footage. In the span of about a second, police can be heard shouting at Crawford and shooting him twice. Crawford is facing to the side with the BB gun swinging loosely toward the ground. As the officers advance, he appears to bend his knees. What's going on? Gunshots in the store. Police officers are here. They're on the scene. Crawford collapses and police move to restrain him. He was taken to a hospital but died of his wounds. Lisey Johnson, the mother of Crawford's two young children, said she was on the phone with him and heard him tell police it's not real. She put the call on speakerphone and John Crawford's father, who was with Johnson at the time, said he heard his son gasping for air. He told the Cincinnati Enquirer, I'm virtually listening to my kid taking his last breath. Another woman also lost her life that day at the Walmart. <clears throat> In the panic that ensued amidst the police advance, a customer named Angela Williams, the one shown earlier in the pet aisle shopping with her two young children, went into cardiac arrest and died. Well, on Wednesday, a special grand jury concluded police were justified in shooting John Crawford. At a news conference, the special prosecutor who handled the case, Mark Peepmeyer, acknowledged that without Ronald Ritchie's 911 call, the shooting never would have happened. We've got a, a caller who, I think for the most part, saw what he said on the 911 call. Some of the things he said on the 911 call, maybe he was trying to fill in some gaps in what he saw, but he very clearly tells the 911 operator, I'm in a Walmart, there's a guy in here with an assault rifle, he's loading it, and he's pointing it at people. And this is what is communicated to the police officers. The one officer even calls back in, and he's basically, wait a minute, are you saying he's actually pointing it at people? And they say yes. And the law is real clear. When you're a police officer responding to the scene, it's not what is true or not true, it's what you reasonably believe to be true. And there's no reason for these officers not to believe that's what's going on. The Justice Department says they'll review the shooting. 
to talk more about the case. We're joined by two guests. In New York, Rashad Robinson is with us, executive director of Color of Change, a national organization uh, that's been calling for weeks for Walmart to release the surveillance tapes. And in Columbus, Ohio, James Hayes is founding member of the Ohio Students Association, which has been organizing protests over the shooting of John Crawford. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! John, let's go to you first. Uh, James, let's go to you first in Columbus. Um, talk about your reaction to um, the grand jury uh, uh, not finding the police officers guilty in the shooting. Well, first, thank you all for having me on the show. Um, when, you know, many of us were present in, uh, while they were making the announcement, and to be honest, none of us were shocked. Um, for weeks, the family has been asking for the Department of Justice to open their own investigation because the writing was on the wall that the grand jury would return with no indictment. Um, the last time that Beaver Creek, Ohio was in national news, they were fighting the Regional Transit Authority from putting a bus stop near their mall that would allow residents from Dayton to access the mall, people who work there, people who shop there. Um, you know, we already know how Green County jurors vote. Um, there's just this good old boys network and this uh, many conflicts of interest, that, which, which we understood um, made it unlikely that an indictment would be found. So we weren't, we, we weren't surprised, but we were very saddened. We were very saddened that the jury was unable to indict these officers, um, unable to, to push this case forward for a jury trial, saddened that the prosecutor didn't really attempt to prosecute this officer, but instead seemed to be justifying the decisions, trying to figure out how to, how to show that there was no one at fault. Um, but we, while being saddened, we understand that we must push forward, and it, it, only, it only strengthens our resolve to fight for justice for John, his family, and to fight for true systemic change that will make sure that there are, 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 are fewer and fewer John Crawfords. And, and James Hayes, why did it take so long for this video to come out after the grand jury decision? Clearly, uh, the, uh, everyone knew that there had to be surveillance cameras inside the Walmart that might have captured some of these events. That's something we've been asking for since a week after John was killed, release the tape. Um, our first round of actions, we had an action in Cleveland, we had a march in Beaver Creek where about 200 protesters went to the Beaver Creek police station. Um, and that, and that, culmin that round of protests culminated in action at our Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine's office. Um, the day after that, uh, Mike DeWine allowed the family and the lawyers um, to see about six minutes of the footage in, um, from the Walmart security cameras. Afterwards, uh, the family said our son was murdered, and we, we were pushing for a public release, but we were told that it could take up to two to three years um, for that tape to be released when we initially went and spoke with representatives from Mike DeWine's office. Um, it's clear that they, it's clear that, that they knew if, if they released the tape before the jury um, made its decision that the public was going to under the public was going to come to a decision before them and and everyone who's seen the tape it's resonating across the country right now people are seeing that John Crawford had absolutely no time to respond to the officers they entered the store at 8:25 and by 8:27 John Crawford was on the ground with two bullets inside of his body and um, and I honestly think that they knew that they were going to um, not not try to really indict this officer, and they didn't want the public to indict him before the grand jury had an opportunity to, to make the decision. The Crawford family's attorney, Michael Wright, reacted to the grand jury's decision in a statement that said, quote, rather than advocate for the constitutional rights of John Crawford, um, uh, the third, and Angela Williams, the other victim in the case, Attorney General DeWine and Special Prosecutor Mark Peepmeyer made excuses for the officer's actions and have erroneously argued the officer's actions were reasonable. The statement continued, quote, the Crawford family feels they've been victimized all over again and once again requests the U.S. Department of Justice conduct an independent investigation into the tragic death of John H. Crawford III. This is John Crawford's girlfriend, <clears throat> Lisey Johnson, who was on the phone with Crawford. This is the mother of his two children when police shot him. I just heard them just shoot him like he would not. And he was just telling them that it wasn't real. And he, they didn't even give him a chance to respond. They just shot.
It's not real, Johnson says. Those were Crawford's last words. Crawford's father says he heard his son's last moments on speakerphone. He later watched the surveillance video showing his death and described what he saw. It was just unbelievable. That's all I could tell you. Uh, I pray that no one ever, ever has to go through what we're going through. It's unconscionable. You know, I saw my son getting murdered. We're going to turn now to Special Prosecutor Mark Peepmeyer describing how the police officer who shot Crawford responded to the 911 call. I mean, again, you could see how serious this was because he gets out of his car, puts his regular service piece in the trunk, gets out an assault rifle. The other officer shows up, does the same thing, puts on his tactical vest, gets his assault rifle. So it's very obvious from what they did. They thought this was the real deal. And then they're beating feet in there. They're not just walking around. You can see as they're coming in. I mean, it looks like a combat picture. And that's what these guys were taught. That's how they're taught to approach this kind of thing. Special Prosecutor Mark Peepmeyer acknowledged the police response might have been a little bit over the top. James Hayes, who is Special Prosecutor Peepmeyer? Well, in Ohio, we know, we know Mark Pete Meyer as um, the prosecutor who failed to bring justice in the Timothy Thomas trial, which before the events in Ferguson was the last time there was an uprising in an American city around race relations. Um, we know him as the prosecutor who sent the, the, the inmates in the Lucasville prison um, uprising to death row. Um, when he was appointed, it was clear that uh, that this was not a good sign um, for what would happen in Greene County, and it was another, it was more fuel to the fire um, in terms of trying to bring the, the Department of Justice in to open their own investigation. And what about the context of this happening in Greene County for uh, listeners and viewers around the country? Tell us a little bit about Greene County. Well, as I said earlier, you know, the last time that Beaver Creek, Ohio, was in the was in national news, they were they were trying to keep black people out of their city, trying to keep black people from shopping in their mall, trying to keep the black people who work in their mall from having an easy access um, through public transit. Um, you know, Greene County is a place where, um, in, you know, in the 30s and 40s, and even before that, many Southerners were moving up um, for for job opportunities, um, working at the the Air Force base in the area, um, and those those mentalities and attitudes are are still prevalent. Um, you know, our, our attorney general, Mike DeWine, is from Greene County. He, he grew up there and began his political career there as a prosecutor. His daughter is currently a prosecutor there. Um, you know, there, there's a good old boys network that um, has power in the county still to this day. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's clear that the, you know, the nepotism and the conflicts of interest in this case are, are especially ripe. Um, Officer Williams, the, the shooter, um, the, one, the man who, who, who killed John Crawford, um, his father was also on the, on the Beaver Creek Police Force. Um, you know, and so it's, it's, it's no surprise that he's receiving, uh, you know, special treatment. I mean, this is the second time um, that Officer Williams has killed, him, has killed somebody in Greene County in the last four years. Uh, so it's pretty clear that, that, that he should not be a police officer. I mean, if a, if a Walmart employee misses two shifts, um, they're going to be fired. So, you know, even, even, if this, even if this was the most genuine, honest mistake, it's pretty clear um, that, that, that this officer should be let go um, and, and, and try to find something else that, that, that he can do better. Um, but Greene County is a place where, where we, were, we were always worried that we would be unable to find justice. Um, it's a place, and, and it's one of the reasons that led to us wanting to, to make the pilgrimage, make the journey from the Walmart where John Crawford was killed to the courthouse in Xenia, walking through those back roads um, and through Greene County so we could, in our action, not only bring attention from around the country to Greene County, but, um, but, but, but give an opportunity for us to, to show the, the residents of Greene County, those who are with us and those who are against us, that people are, are willing to take action in this case. James Hayes is speaking to us from Columbus, Ohio. Rashad Robinson here in New York, executive director of Color of Change, usually in the Bay Area. Um, Walmart <clears throat> is the largest retailer of rifles in the country. Absolutely. They, they, uh, they have spent years um, um, 
uh, lobbying for um, looser gun laws in this po in this country, you know, partnering with the American Legislative Exchange Council, they actually wrote the Stand Your Ground law, which became famous during the Trayvon Martin tragedy, and pushed that law along with the NRA to about 26 states around the country. They are the largest seller of, of rifles and guns in this country, and they're also the largest employer of black people and women in this country. And so, to the extent that you know, part of our campaign was really focusing on what is Walmart's social response. Responsibility in this. How are they going to sort of hide behind, um, you know, what's happening and not release those tapes? There were over 200 cameras in that store, and um, we had to wait weeks and weeks for any sense of understanding of what happened. So for customers, for black folks who are shopping in Walmart and working in Walmart, what can they expect from this giant um, about their safety? And uh, obviously, the fact that those uh, those tapes were not released until now, when this occurred even before the shooting in Ferguson, shows that this would have created an even bigger national furor uh, if those tapes had come out at that time. Absolutely. I mean, he here's what's happening all around the country. You know, at Color of Change, we continue to hear the stories from our members. We continue to see these issues bubble up over and over and over again, where black people are harmed or put or killed by police officers, and there's no sense of of justice, no sense of accountability. The fact of the matter is, is that for black parents, for people who are family members or care about black people, the idea that, that we can expect any sense of justice or any sense of safety from our law enforcement figures, that we can call 911 and expect the law enforcement figures to show up and, and protect us and see our lives as valuable and with humanity. Ohio has open carry laws. Part of that has been pushed by the NRA. Um, so John, which are? Which open carry laws means that you can carry a gun around openly in the state of Ohio. You could carry a gun into Walmart. So, in fact, even if he did have the gun in the store, he was not breaking the law. What, these laws do not protect black people because police officers are not trained to see black people as human. And this is an ongoing problem, and all of us have to be deeply concerned. You were in Ferguson. The key point in both these cases, Pete Meyer laid it out. Um, it's not the tr truth that matters. It's what the police officers believed, and they saw that area as a combat zone. Michael Brown, too, on the street, how the police officer saw him. It's absolutely about sort of this racism and implicit bias that exists in our society, and also the fact of the matter is that police are allowed to investigate themselves, that we have this political system where prosecutors have no incentive, um, where the victims are black and the police officers are white, to prosecute vigorously. We saw um, this press conference, and we saw the press conferences coming out of Ferguson. Right from the start in both of those situations, we saw that the decks were stacked against justice, that there was sort of not going to be a sense of fairness, that there was not going to be a sense of fair play for, for the victims in these cases. And the fact of the matter is, is that the the video not being released, the, the political apparatus in Ohio had weeks to criminalize um, John Crawford in death. The same way that Michael Brown was criminalized in death, that, that we're releasing all sorts of information, we're trying to create a sense of doubt in the community's mind. And so when these cases go to the grand jury, um, when they go to, to the community, that folks have sort of this understanding that these are not people that deserve our sympathy, that deserve to be seen as victims. James Hayes, I wanted to ask you one other a point. Uh, I, as I understand it, initial press reports indicated there were multiple 911 calls to the police, and it turned out that there was really only one 911 call to the police, the one that we uh, uh, we featured earlier on. Is that accurate? It's absolutely accurate. Um, the only not, there there were multiple 911 calls, but the only one before officers entered the store and fired shots was by Ronald Ritchie. Well, <clears throat> on that note, I want to thank you both for being with us here in New York. Rashad Robinson uh, is the executive director of Color of Change. James Hayes with us in Columbus, founding member of the Ohio Students Association, which has been organizing protests around the shooting of John Crawford, holding a, a BB gun in a Walmart store that he had picked up.